Mike's Daily Podcast. Hello and welcome to Mike's Daily Podcast. This is MFF episode 2512. Mike's Daily Podcast. 2512. And last night I'm up watching a wonderful show that's on Acorn TV Plus. And you know it's from New Zealand. And everybody's got the cool little New Zealand accent. And then something happened. It was like an accident, only it was done on purpose. And that was somebody at work called me to tell me they wouldn't be coming in. Mike's Daily Podcast. But you know what time they come in? Five o'clock in the morning. So, yes. Mike's. I'm like, I guess. Daily. I'm turning this off. Podcast. And I'm going to bed. Yeah. Which is what I did. And then woke up very early. I think I had about four hours sleep. Went into work and helped produce the Rob Black and Your Money program. Where he discusses money and stuff and how McDonald's did really well in their earnings report. And what else? I heard an interesting... It wasn't... I don't know if Rob said this. I think I've heard him say this before, but I've heard some other type financial talk talkers uh this one financial advisor i was listening to on the radio said yes i know that sounds suspect but i think he had an interesting point and that is people always concerned about investing in all these tech stocks but what about the day-to-day life stocks No matter what happens, day-to-day life stuff is what we're going to be putting our money into. And if you're going to invest in that as an investor trying to get a return on it, that seems like a smart way to go. But I don't know. That's the limit of what I... I employ people to take care of that information and stuff for me to help me through those things. Because I am not an expert But I find it fascinating And there's so much to learn And And here's today's podcast picture And it deals a lot with human behavior Natural human responses What we do as a society What we spend money on What keeps us afloat What keeps countries afloat It's all fascinating to me I think the podcast picture Will be something recent I don't know what it's going to be it's going to be great though I think I think it's going to go back to that Wonderful trip I took At the beginning of October At the beginning of this month As we're nearing the end of this month When I went up to the Mount Shasta area Or maybe Ashland, Oregon One of the two It'll be up there The late great Basil the Boxer You know I saw a boxer today But he did not have He barked But he did not say, He did not have this This deep Operatic voice The late great Basil the Boxer had Uh, Miss him so much So so much to get to Because Well I haven't done uh, uh, Many many podcasts lately And I gotta get back into The daily thing I get interrupted by life So it derails my dailiness But you know We were talking last About the artsiest cities In the country And right now California is Got a proposition That you can vote on Say yes or no And it's either yes Or no And here it is Here's what the proposition is Should we spend more money On the arts For our schools In California Well I looked at it In the voter book You know the little book They Supplemental book They give you That has all the Pros and cons Of everything Oh, a lot of people were giving pros There were no cons I guess the only con would be It's expensive It's going to cost us a lot as taxpayers But yeah, arts Arts in our schools So I'm pretty sure that's going to pass And we'll have more taxes And We'll have really artsy We'll be really artsy And on the top of that list was the San Francisco was San Francisco is the artsiest city in the nation was is apparently according to this lawn love what exactly is lawn love they are a some kind of landscaper lawn love and home care 
Oh, I guess they're located in Mountain View. Maybe that's why they're sending it, because they're in the area. So, their way of spreading their name for their company is sending the best and worst cities for certain things. And what they did was, for National Sandwich Day, which is coming up on November 3rd, they decided to rank the best cities for sandwich lovers. But this is not for this year, for next year. I guess they're planning ahead. Where can you find a standout sandwich? They looked at cities with plenty of high quality sandwich shops and award winning sandwiches. They measured residents' cravings through Google searches for sandwich related terms. I heard Google didn't do too well in the stocks today. So here they go the top five sandwich places. Well, top five was at number five, was what was at number one for the artsiest city in the country but at number five San Francisco apparently for sandwiches in the country number four St. Louis number three Washington DC number two New Orleans and number one New York why because they got all those delis the New York it's, it's even a thing no matter where you go in the country you can check out a New York deli the worst apparently is Patterson New Jersey At number two is Mesquite, Texas. Number three is Chula Vista, California. Interesting. Why do they say that? Uh, It says, Big and busy cities are full of beloved spots to grab a speedy sandwich. New York City takes first place overall with the highest sandwich quality and interest out of all the cities in their ranking. Sandwich artists are abundant in San Francisco, which has the most sandwich shops per square mile. Washington has the second highest access. That's uh, Washington, D.C. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. Anyway. Panera Bread traces its roots to St. Louis, which was at number four. And then, oh, the Philly cheesesteak. Philadelphia was at number seven on the list. And they... There are plenty of places to grab quality barbecue and tortas in... in the... uh, in Texas. But nowhere to get a sandwich. I guess that's why they put Mesquite, Texas at number two. Okay. But why? Why did you put so much hate on New Jersey? It didn't say, huh? Why New Jersey is a bad place for sandwiches? There we go. Hey, we're outside a cafe anyway, where there are no sandwiches. So we're just as bad as Patterson, New Jersey. Look who's here. Hello, Michael Masters. My name is Ruta Vega. And yes, being older, I am very fortunate to have someone call and check on me every day. He is from India and very concerned about my car warranty. Ooh. Is that a joke? Yes. Are you a joke teller? Yes. Was that funny? No. I guess nothing spoils a good story like the arrival of a witness. Mark Twain said that Yes those quotes were from Winky Winky the old friend of my mom's My mom passed away earlier this year And Winky had been sending my mom emails With funny things and quotes and whatnot. And I emailed her back to give her the news And she goes well I'll send I'll start sending you the emails now And we reminisced about my mom And it's wonderful and thank you Winky Okay now it is time for the segment Let's go back with Matthews I'm moving this right along I don't know if I really should have gone with that Sandwiches story It feels like there wasn't much substance In the sandwiches story By the way My, my, my uh, problems with my S's I'm, I'm getting I'm developing a lisp in my Old age Don't know exactly what that is I gotta My tongue is not <laughs> Following my <laughs> Instructions as, as it used to do So I will have to Practice my S's It seems to me Maybe I'm hearing something And it's not there But 
Okay There is this other Bit to, No I guess that was all the news I had today That was it Except Oh UFOs We did not Go into UFOs Okay But I think we should NASA announced It's Undeniable Aerial Phenomena Research Team uh, Oh Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Research Team They don't call them UFOs anymore They call them A-E uh, U-A-P's So the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Research Team um, They're going to announce their finding next year A 16 person team They're reviewing Unexplained Aerial Phenomena Or UAPs For NASA UAPs are classified due to their puzzling behavior in the sky Which doesn't fit the known behavior of aircraft or known natural phenomena It includes This team includes an astronaut A space treaty drafter Someone I guess who wrote a space treaty A boxer Not a dog I don't think That's too bad And several astrobiologists the researchers will analyze unclassified data on UAPs or particular sightings of objects behaving unlike anything we're familiar with. And NASA says their work will lay the groundwork for future UAP studies. This from inverse.com. NASA is going in with an open mind, they wrote. We will not underestimate what the natural world contains and we believe there is a lot to learn. Until... Until the full report is released to the public In the middle of next year NASA says everything will be kept A secret Bum 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 Alright Thank you That's an interesting bit of news And I guess that was it For this Oh psychedelics That's right Psychedelics are being studied more to treat depression and addiction Can psychedelics cure? Scientists are investigating how hallucinogenic substances Can have a positive effect on people struggling with a range of mental health conditions Apparently this was being done up until the 60s When drug, drug, drug culture just exploded And Nixon had a fit And everything got clamped down But now it's starting to come back Early research suggests that psychedelic-assisted therapy may help people recover from depression, addiction, PTSD, and more. Some psychedelics may actually change the way brain regions talk to each other. Dr. Roland Griffith says it's like reprogramming the operating system of a computer. You're getting down to a very basic code level change. One theory is that a brain region called the claustrum Acts like a switchboard in the brain Possibly explaining why psychedelics can help reset rigid behaviors and thought patterns Brain regions may be talking to each other in a way that they typically don't And they may be talking to each other in radically different ways than they normally do the idea that psychedelics can heal isn't new Indigenous peoples around the world have used plant-based psychedelics for thousands of years Alright, and that all from PBS And their Nova program So, there you go What? Oh yes, it's time now for the segment that I was telling you moments earlier about Let's go back with Matthews Once upon a time I was on the radio Well I've been on the radio for 35 years Something like that Well, Maybe a little more than that And I had a show On the country radio And I'm trying to find the, a clip to play you Here we, we've gone back to the Santa Fe Cafe 2003 Let's go to 2002 What's happening? And we're going to play you this. This is from 2002, early 2000s, early O's. And here we go. And shall we play this? Yes, we shall. What's happening? Uh, 
Uh, you know, that is so good that you said, hey, how you doing? What's happening? Really? Because that lets everyone know that you're really there. I'm here. We're going into the gift shop. Okay. Our 18-year-old gift shop supervisor, Shelly Shuhart, is selling K. Hey Santa Fe Cafe souvenirs. Shelly Shuhart, who is also here at Cafe Anyway, uh, the, got her start on the Santa Fe Cafe back in the 90s and early O's. Let's see how that's going. Hello, Matt Michael. Hello, Jeremy. Hey, Shelly. Matt Michael, it's Jeremy, and I used to go out a long time ago. Sure. And um, things just didn't work out. No. Well, tonight we have a dating service here at the cafe. The disgruntled fiddle player has a dating service. I know. It's a sham. Uh huh. Really? It's a con. Okay. Am I cold? I'm like so sure. Vince Gill. Ah, oh, Vince Gill. <laughs> what a voice, Vince Gill. There was a lady, old lady, that used to call me and say, Vince Gill has the voice of an angel. Her name was Selena. Now it's time for the segment, the Mike Matthews New Tunes Feud. Here are two songs that are going to battle it out, and you pick the one you like better. Uh, this one is from Delia Meshler. She covers Karen Dalton and Delida's song. Okay, something on your mind is what this is. Is sending you to... Okay. I guess that is right here. They have have me taking a circuitous route. Okay, this song is entitled Something on Your Mind. Leaving all your dreams too far behind. Didn't you see you can make it without? That's Delia Meshler. Do you like that song better? Or do you like this one from Scab? Originally, a working title represented the first letters of the band's names. Sean, Corey, Alec, and Brandon. So it became known as Scab, an acronym with a shifting meaning. It's phonetic double acting as a metaphor for protection and healing for a group that's always been there for one another. Ah. Okay, let's listen to the first song they gave me called Why Do I Dream of You? Here it goes. It's going to play for you here. Hopefully. If this goes right. Okay, do I got to click on the... On the... Uh, what do you call those things? Cookies? Okay. <laughs> All right, out my ears. Did you like Scab better? That was Scab or Delia Meshler. Call me at 336-MM-DAILY. That's 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM is the Mike Matthews Daily, as in what this podcast tries to be. But, oh, you know, sometimes, sometimes we get sidetracked. So, yeah. Call now. 336-MM-DAILY. And with more on how to reach me, it is A-Frame. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.